In the previous lesson, we looked at the git add command and we got to understand what a staging area is in the context of a repository. We also saw a bit of the git commit command, but in this lesson, we'll be diving deeper into the git commit command. So the first thing to understand here is what is a commit? You can think of a commit as a snapshot. A commit captures the state of your project at a particular point in time. Time. So think of commits as different versions of your project. You have the first version of your project which included some changes, then you introduce new changes and then you commit those new changes as a second version of your project and then you have multiple versions of your project and then you can also check out the previous versions of your project, the previous snapshots. You can always go back to see what those versions are and the changes that were introduced in those versions. Currently in our project, if you go to the .git directory, you go to logs and you you go to head we have four versions of our project this is the first version with some details this is the second version this is the third version this is the fourth version so here we have four commits or you can say four snapshots or you can also say four versions and each of these commits would record changes like what files were deleted what files were added what files were modified and you can also see what lines in those files were modified now when it comes to commits your commits can also have some information so first you have a unique identifier for your commit this is the unique identifier this is the identifier of the previous commit so this is like previous commit before this current commit and this commit also has the author information because we set git config before we created a commit it also has a timestamp so you can know when this commit was created and then it also has the commit message which in our case is add initial files for the second commit you have this id which as you can see is the identifier for the previous commit so this commit here is saying that from this commit we got to this commit so from this version this version was created this is a unique identifier for this commit and as we progress in this course you would see how we'll be able to use the unique identifiers to kind of check out a previous snapshot and you have that for the remaining commits that we have here so again think of commits as snapshots which captures the changes at a particular period of time so then how do you create a commit how do you take a snapshot of your project you do that with the git commit command now one thing with the git commit command is that you cannot use it with an empty staging area if you remember in the previous lesson i mentioned that a staging area is where you have the changes that you want to include in your next commit if i should run git status now you can see that it says changes not staged for commit this is the change we have so far in api.py where we added this comment so currently we do not have any changes in the staging area so let's say i try to run git commit you see it says that no changes added to commit so before you can use the git commit then you have to use the git add to add changes to your staging area so currently we have a change in api.py and let's say i add a change to script.js change the background color on click let's just say this is a feature now we have two changes api.py and script.js now i want to add one of these changes to the staging area i can do git add then I can add script.js. Now, if I should run git status, you can see I now have changes to be committed. This is the staging area. These are the changes that I want to include in the next commit. These are the changes that I want to take a snapshot of. Yes, that's a better way to look at it. These are the changes that I want to take a snapshot of. Instead of taking a snapshot of my whole project, I'm saying I have made a couple of changes in my project, but this is the only change that I want to take a snapshot of. And now I can run the git commit command. Now when we run the git commit command, git is going to open your default editor where you can type the commit message. Now commit messages are very important because if I should just enter a message like a new file, maybe three weeks from now, I want to come back to the version where I introduced this feature. It will be very difficult to track my way down to when I introduced this feature because I had a commit like a new file. A new file is very generic so he said i want to use a message that would make it easy for me to remember this snapshot so maybe here update team on button click 
Now, when I have this, I can close this file. And when I close this file, Git has now created a new commit, a new snapshot. So if I should go back to head here, now we have five snapshots. And this is the last snapshot, which I just included update team on button click. Now let's say for api.py, we also want to create another snapshot that includes this change. Now, if I should run git status, you can see that changes not stage for commit is just api.py. So I can run git add api.py. Now api.py is in the staging area. It is ready to be committed. Then I can run git commit. Now instead of just running git commit and then typing the message here, I can also type the message directly here with the M option. So this M option allows me to enter a message now this m option is useful when i want to just type a simple message but if i want to type a long message that maybe enters two sentences or three sentences then it will be easier by just running git commit and then typing the message in my editor but if it's a simple message i can just do it here so remove dark mode toggle let's just assume this is the feature that i removed now in this case i only changed one file but it could be that for this particular removing of the feature i may have changed five files now you're going to add those five files to the staging area then you can commit it like this and now a new commit has been created if we go back here you can see we now have six snapshots and this is the recent snapshot remove dark mode this snapshot also has timestamp the author my name my email and of course the id for that commit so this is the idea of commit it captures these changes in the staging area at a particular period of time now whenever i wanted to show you the previous commit i always had to come to this git directory and to this head directory well you don't always have to do that you also have the git log command if you run the git log command it's going to show you the history of commits that you have in your project so you can see the recent one is remove dark mode then we have this commit we have this commit if i keep scrolling i can see all the commits until i get to the bottom here i can also just run git log minus one so it shows me only the last one commit i can run minus two so it shows me the last two commits don't worry we're going to dive deeper into the git log command as we progress in this course i just wanted to show you that you don't always have to come here to see the history of your commit you can use git log for that now one thing you're probably thinking of is how do you know what files were changed in a particular commit as we progress in this lesson we'll see more ways to do that but i just wanted to show you a quick way to do that so let's say we have git log minus one we have this last commit i can now copy this commit id so right click copy and i can do git show i paste the id and then i do start let me close that so i have stats now when i do this you can see it shows me the commit information it shows me the message and it also tells me what files were changed as you can see here it says one file changed two insertions one deletion but don't worry as we progress in this course i'll show you better ways in which you can see what files were changed where the changes actually happened and things like that i hope this lesson helps you understand the git commit command if you enjoyed it please give it a like share with others and also subscribe so you are notified when a new lesson on this git course is published.